Hi, my name is Willie Cook, and this is another video for the Briggs & Stratton Vanguard engine upgrade. I'm going to talk about how the electrical works on these engines. Case in point, this one has a charging system, a kill, and a starter wire. This one has a fuel shutoff solenoid, a kill wire, and a charging system, and a starter wire. This fuel shutoff solenoid needs to have power for when it's run to run and to start. And the key switch isn't exactly compatible for the Vanguard engine versus the opposed cylinder engine. I will get I will go into the detail as to why standard key switch won't work for the Vanguard. Okay. Now I have a, all the wiring hooked up here and ready to test. I'll go over it step by step and what to look out for. Okay. So hang on. Now I'll show you how all this works. I'm going to be using a test light. And this is all hooked up. The engine will start, the charging system's hooked up, and the ignition is grounded out as pro uh, as it's supposed to be. Okay? So I'm gonna unhook the key switch and show you how it works quick and how it hooks up to the engine after. Okay. And what we hear is uh, uh, is a standard key switch. We have our B here for battery, that gets 12 volts all the time. We have our G for ground. We have our M for motor, which is the uh, ignition hot lead. And we have our S for starter. And we have L for lights. Now in the off position, we have continuity between the motor and ground, okay? So electricity will flow between those two terminals. And we have the run circuit, in which case we have continuity between the battery, or right here, and the light circuit. What happens, and where the problem lies, is while this is fine for the opposed cylinder engine, when we go to start up a Vanguard, we need power going to this light circuit at the same time we have the starter circuit live. In which case, when we go to the starting circuit, the battery and the starter circuit is live, and then the light is does not get power. So I'm going to show you how to bypass that when we get to that Vanguard, if you stay tuned. Now I'm going to show you with a test light what signals get sent to the engine. Okay. Now right now, the ignition switch is in the off position. This is where we'll have continuity between the engine, which is the magneto, to the ground. So it'll ground out the ignition. Both of these engines have magneto for ignition. Okay, so all that is is when the key is in the off position, when the key is in the off position, we get continuity to ground. Okay? My test light is hooked up to battery positive, so it's searching out of ground. That will ground out the ignition when the key switches in the off position. Next is the accessory circuit, the light circuit. I'm hooked up to battery negative now. Now with the key in the on position, I get power to the accessory, so the charging system, okay? And this power will also be run out to lights and whatever, what have you. Wherever you need battery positive during the run circuit, uh, when the key's in the on position, we get continuity from the battery power to the charging and light circuit, okay? When the key's in the off position, this light, will turn off when you go to turn the key back on to the run position. It comes back on again. Now the problem is during the start circuit, okay? We need power, we don't need power on this engine, the Magneto old style engine. This does not have a fuel solenoid. We don't need power going to the charging system or any accessories to start, okay? So what will happen when we turn this traditional key switch to the start position, it'll shut power off here. And uh, I'll show you what happens in just a second. Okay, I have the starter wire unhooked right now. The key is in the off position now. This is the run position. Now we need power to run. We do not need power to start this engine going to the accessories. Now for the Vanguard, we have that fuel solenoid. Now that has to have power in order for the engine to get fuel. So when you go to the start circuit, you want to have power run, keeping that fuel solenoid open so the engine continues to get fuel. Now this key switch, when you turn it to the start position, 
shuts the power off to the charging system accessories and all the power is diverted to the starter and then back to the run position the power comes back on and once again it turns off when the key is turned into the off position now this can be somewhat misleading because when the engine is running we'll have somewhat of a power back feed from the charging system keeping the accessories lit up now one thing you gotta keep in mind is this fuel solenoid is a safety feature for killing the engine without killing the spark it cuts the fuel supply off instead of the spark so it shuts the fuel off and it doesn't load the uh, muffler up with unburnt fuel and uh, I'm guessing as of lately the EPA doesn't like unburnt fuel in the atmosphere or something like that either way they'd rather use a fuel solenoid to shut an engine off via safety instead of the ignition which I'm not gonna argue with that because I'm not a fan of when you come off the seat and it backfires and you think everything's gone wrong but sit back on the seat and find oh it's the stupid safeties <laughs> So, that's the idea of the fuel solenoid. The fuel sign idea isn't there to shut the engine off when you turn the key off. It's just to kill the engine in a, in a safety feature uh, without killing your spark. Okay? Now I'm going to show you how to use a traditional key switch in addition with a relay to continue to keep getting power to the accessories so it'll still start. Okay, like I said, when you go to start it, there's no power, in which case if we go to hook up this key switch to this Vanguard engine, there will not be any fuel. I will show you how to bypass that. Okay, now moving on. This is just one thing I wanted to keep in mind, is I have a battery power hooked up to what the charging system is hooked up to. So in the case of with the engine running, if the spark is not grounded out and it continues to run, even though the key is in the off position, we still have power run to the accessories and or fuel relay. So the fuel relay is not used to kill the engine. It is mainly used as a safety feature to arrest or spark, shut the engine off without sending fuel into a muffler, in which case if you had spark killing an engine and come back on, you could light that excess burn, uh, unburned fuel in the muffler. Okay. So this is just simulating the charging system being lit up, in which case it doesn't matter where the key switch is at, we're always going to have power back feeding from the charging system to that fuel relay. That's normal. We're just going to make this engine run. We're not worried about hooking safety features up, but if you did want to hook up a safety feature, you could take this positive power and relay it through your safety switches on any particular tractor. Okay, so if you want the fuel solenoid hooked up to a safety, you got to run it back that uh, the power through your safety switches before the solenoid. Okay, now I'm going to show you how I modified this tractor to be able to run using this key switch. So, okay, so hang on. Now here is where things get interesting. This is a relay. consists of four wires. It's just a switch. We have a signal circuit and a power circuit, okay? My signal circuit consists of battery ground, which is over here, and then my green wire is a signal sourced from the starter relay activation from the key switch. So the same power that activates the starter solenoid activates this relay. So as before, we go to start it, we don't get any power to the fuel, re fuel shutoff solenoid, which I am using the test light to rep uh, resemble. Okay, when we go to start it, we need power going to this light for, we're going to use that power for this light going to the fuel shutoff solenoid. Okay, now this is where things get interesting. We have two, we have the activation circuit, which is these outside prongs. We have battery negative. When we get when we get positive power sent to this green wire from the starter circuit, it closes the switch. Now we have three other wires. We have a red wire here in the center. We have this wire, the black wire going out to the relay, or I'm sorry, the fuel solenoid. This black wire is going to go out to our test light, which will resemble our fuel solenoid. 
Now, right now we have power coming into the center wire from the run circuit, the light circuit, and the key switch. And what we need is power during the starting circuit. So the same power from the, that activates this relay can also be hooked up to this wire to run power to the fuel shutoff solenoid. And what's going to happen is we only have continuity between the center prong and the bottom prong, okay? When the switch is in the neutral position, the off position. Now when the switch comes on, we have continuity from the top terminal, these two wires, down to the bottom terminal, the same wire going out to our relay, okay? And then we cut our power coming from the key switch. So we're losing, we're, we have continuity from these two wires, and when the switch is activated, we'll have continuity between this wire and the fuel shutoff relay. And what I'm going to do is hook this starter signal wire to another power wire going to the relay. So when the starter is activated, it closes the switch and then the power is able to run from a separate terminal on this relay. Okay, I'll go into more detail when I unplug this. I just want to show you how I was going to wire it up. Okay. Now that this is wired up, when we go to the start circuit, we now have power running to the relay, or the fuel shutoff solenoid. We have power running through this relay from both the start circuit, which is where I'm at now, and the run circuit. And if we turn it off, the light turns off. See, that's the run circuit, that's the start circuit, and back to the run circuit again. That's a, a loose connection in the key. Not a great key switch. Okay, here we are in the run position, start position, run position, off position. This is the same key switch as what I've been using, only using this relay, I can now have power going to that fuel shutoff solenoid during the run circuit. Now I'm going to unplug this and show how this relay works quick. You have four prongs here, okay? Now 30 is going to be where our fuel shutoff solenoid is going to be wired. That's where our power is going to be going. That's this one on the bottom, as labeled right here. That's 30 on the bottom. So our fuel shutoff relay is going to be hooked up to this bottom prong. And our power from our run circuit from the key switch is going to go to the center prong. Now these two prongs have continuity when the switch is in the neutral position, the off position. Okay, when then the switch is turned on, when we have power to these outside terminals. These outside terminals are hooked up to an electromagnet. We have negative on one side and positive on the other. Doesn't necessarily matter which direction you have it hooked up. Now what happens when we have battery negative on one side and we put starter positive from the key switch to this side, then our circuit closes and we have continuity between this top terminal and this bottom terminal, okay? Which would be 30 to 87 instead of 87A. So what we do is the same power that closes the circuit allowing continuity from this top to bottom circuit, we can also run the power from this right terminal to this top terminal, which then allows the starter power to run activate the solenoid, and then run down to our fuel relay. Okay, so just adding this relay into the key switch, we can then power that fuel solenoid in order to run the engine. And that's how we're going to save ourselves from having to buy a special key switch to have to run the Vanguard engine in the same tractor. So I do not need to rewire a key or the tractor. I just need to add... So all we have to do is leave the wiring alone and then add this relay in. All we're doing is we're sourcing a signal uh, power from the starter signal so from the key switch. And we're wiring that up to the relay to the signal circuit and a secondary power circuit, the on circuit. Then we're going to ground the signal circuit anywhere by the relay is fine. Then we have power coming from the light circuit, the charging circuit, going to the center. And we have the one wire running out to the relay. And that's all there is to it. So if I turn this key on, 
I have power to the relay, and if I go to the start position, it starts. Okay? My name is Willie Cook. Make sure you give me a thumbs up and stay tuned, because I have more videos coming up for putting this Vanguard engine into this tractor. Okay? Thanks for watching, and have a good day.